If you're wondering whether the Insta360 Go is the camera for you, then watch this video because I'm going to be taking it around with me all day after I just received this today. God, it's bright. So I've had my Insta360 go for about a day now, and I know there's already a ton of videos out there about it, but here's my view and first impressions on what I like about it and what I think could be improved. And just so you know, I paid for my own Insta360 go. This wasn't a review freebie from the company. So I also had to shop around and get refunds from four different companies in China who said they had it in stock, but didn't. So maybe I have a little bit more skin in the game being a small YouTuber? I don't know. Only you can decide by perhaps liking and subscribing to my channel too. Hi, I'm Saab Johal and welcome to my channel which is all about mobile and 360 video and photography and how to edit for great results. Let's check out some footage I captured with the Insta360 Go and show off some of the editing capabilities of the app too. Absolutely loving the size of this thing. It is tiny, it is this little pill which just is magical and takes all these amazing hyperlapses and all kinds of stuff. Love it, absolutely love it so far. Right, what did I love about this camera. Well, it's the size and the sheer versatility of this thing. I love it. Where is it? Here it is in the little case. It's just so adaptable to use in so many situations and I'll probably use it most when I'm having a busy day going from place to place or if I'm traveling from A to B. In fact, I'm heading to from New Zealand to London tomorrow. So expect a video made with the Insta360 Go shortly after I get there next week. And yes, it shoots in 1080p only. As an aside, is it really 1080p? Sometimes it feels to me like an upscaled 720p but maybe that's just me. And yes, some people call it a toy, but I think it comes out with some highly usable video in situations where you either may not bother or it's a bit of an effort to do so, to get another camera out, switch it on, switch it off, pack it away. This is just easy. That's my opinion anyway. All right, what could be improved? Well, the dynamic range isn't all that. The sensor clearly can't have that much depth of range to pick up all the details that are blown out in the highlights or crushed in the blacks too. Though I didn't do too much in the way of low light capture yesterday. And the colors can look a little bit too much on the saturated side for my tastes. But when you think that the major market for this is probably those using it for social media, then you can see why the color grading by default has gone that way rather than a more neutral cinematic look for filmmakers looking to add another tool to their collection. It would be great if there was a cinematic mode or flatter color mode though. And I know you can tweak it in the settings, but it'd be nice just to have it ping out of the box. In terms of operation, I like that the way the button is implemented with just four options. Though it's a little bit confusing because it operates more of a rocker switch when on the pendant or on the clip. You don't have to pull the go out to activate it. You get used to it pretty quickly though. However, it's easy to make mistakes with clicks when getting used to the go. I missed a couple of hyperlapses and took photos instead. You need to know that you need to turn the camera on first or else you just get a burst of quick capture video when setting it going from off. So quick capture mode captures from the go being switched off, but for the other three modes, you have to switch on the go first before you make the single, double or triple click to engage the function that you're after. So just remember that. It's also hard to tell what the camera is doing, what's going on with it, unless you look at it face on because the LED indicator is on the front there. Yes, it vibrates to let you know when it's started or stopped recording, but a lot of the time you can't really feel that. So maybe an LED at the top of the advice could help too. The fact that it was originally launched with just being able to capture 15 or 
30 second videos I thought was good. I will probably treat this like a built-in constraint that forces me to be creative in ways that I might not otherwise have considered. In fact, it comes preloaded with 30 second clips as the default, and I took this down to 15 seconds for exactly that reason. However, those of you who like to record a little longer will appreciate that Insta360 have relented and added a 60 second capture option too, though it will fill up the device pretty quickly, I reckon. And don't forget, the Go also has an interval mode. So if you're doing something and you don't want to have to press the button all the time, you can set the interval on and it will auto capture for you as long as you have the memory capacity and the battery holds out. It will have gaps, but like I said, it's a tool and I'm happy to work with those limits. The microphone, it's a lot better than I thought it was gonna be. And I'll do a test in the future video with using the Bruce Free app, which I've used with One X and the GoPro and the Os Osmo Pocket as well. And I thought the Bluetooth control implementation is really well done too. Well, I've only touched upon the many ways that the Insta360 Go can be used, and I haven't even used all the accessories yet or really talked about the app at all. But I just wanted to get my first impressions out there. I will say that the flash cut feature built on the artificial intelligence platform that I talked about in this video, this video, looks really interesting and produces some great results on first use. You'll have seen some of that in this video. But I really hope they keep updating the music library and cuts or else it's going to get old really, really quickly. I might get up a full review later if you aren't already drowning under the wave of reviews that will already be out there. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to do a full review or if you've got any other questions about the go or tests you'd like me to do in the meantime. Hey, I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have found it useful, please consider subscribing and giving a like. I'd love to see you back here again soon. Here's some of the other videos of mine that you might find interesting or useful. Please take a look around and thanks for watching. Cheers and go well.